Hi everyone, Drini here, and welcome to my channel. So now that we've established that there are multiple scenarios that can happen in the crypto space, but the high probability scenario is we are currently in a bear market. That means we do need to start covering the downside targets for certain gaming cryptos so that we can have a realistic assessment of where the potential price levels of some of these tokens will go in order to prepare for our entry points during a bear market. So today we're going to talk about Splinterlands first or SPS. And full disclosure, I am down to my final one fourth of my unstaked SPS to sell. Because if you've been following me in my previous videos, the key thing to note about the bear market is you have to have a significant cash position because things can go down very, very quickly, especially for altcoins. However, let me be very clear before we dive into the charts. Just because I'm in the midst of selling all of my SPS, it doesn't mean that I don't believe in the project anymore. You can be bearish in the short term because we are expecting certain scenarios to play out, but be very macro long-term bullish for the project. And that is pretty much my stance with SPS. So for Splinterlands, I've kept my deck. It's just I do not have any tradable tokens at the moment because the risk to reward ratio of keeping them is really not that worth it. So let's dive into the charts just to map out all of the scenarios so that you understand where I'm coming from. So for SPS, it is much easier to look at this on a weekly time frame because we know our potential destinations. This downtrend right here can be summarized quite succinctly into two main phenomena. The first one, of course, is we were on the verge of being in a bear market. So the sell-off from this top right here, which is what, which was around October, actually was a leading indicator of Bitcoin's potential downfall from this particular peak all the way now where Bitcoin is currently sitting at 30,500. The second main reason for this massive uh, downturn right here was because of the SPS issuance. So for those of you who are not aware, for 365 days, SPS was being airdropped to NFT asset holders where you have a corresponding number of points that you have to have in order to receive a certain amount of SPS per day. A lot of people who are receiving SPS, they are consistently dumping it into the market because the sheer high inflation was causing so much downward sell pressure that price had no choice but to keep going down like this. It also didn't help, of course, that you have a third component, which was private sales during this particular period, especially early on which only really ended at around April. So for SPS moving forward, we do have to take into account multiple scenarios. And most of it is driven by Bitcoin, of course. So scenario one for Bitcoin is the most optimistic case. Let's say that we are currently in an expanded flat right here where we breached this particular bottom. But from here, we are just on our way up. Even in a bullish scenario, an SPS investment at the moment is still very risky. Why? That is because this particular downtrend right here is still primarily due to the SPS airdrop still going on. So we still have 54 days remaining for the SPS airdrops to end. That means 54 days from now will lead us to around July 25 of 2022 or somewhere in July. So from an investor standpoint, we actually have more time to be out of the market for now, assess the situation before deciding whether or not to come in or not. So scenario number two, of course, is from here, 54 days from now. If Bitcoin decides to have a relief rally, but eventually dump hard and we eventually come to the bottom of this particular range, or at least we are on our way to the bottom of this range, any particular major Bitcoin capitulation really impacts altcoins very significantly. Bitcoin falls down by 20%, altcoins go down by 40-50%. So from here, the downside risk is really much, much, much higher than the upside potential gains that we can have. Because even though SPS blasts off from here, the blast will be muted by the airdrops that are still happening. And if Bitcoin coughs and eventually capitulates within this particular time period, then expect SPS and the rest of the gaming cryptos that we cover to really go into massive, massive downside. So that is the reason why I'm selling all of my SPS. If in case we bounce back from here where the crypto markets rally back up, then my cash position at the moment, it doesn't matter when I DCA accordingly. Because even though I am DCAing and I have missed this bottom, because we now have a full guarantee that we are on our way up, 
then it's okay to DCA because the whole point is to profit. The whole point is not to maximize the multiples. The whole point at the end of the day, how much can we profit from our investments in order to continue either supporting the game or putting our financial freedom expenses elsewhere? And if we capitulate from here, then having a cash position is very good because we can take advantage of these particular lows before the subsequent bounce up. So now that we have mapped out all scenarios and now that you understand why the risk to reward ratio really is not worth it from a holder perspective, where could SPS potentially go from a price perspective? So if you've noticed, SPS since January or early this year has been going through a broadening descending channel right here. So for those of you who are not aware, a broadening descending channel is typically a bullish structure where you have an ever-expanding price range right here. But it is only a bullish structure once we finally break through this particular trend line and eventually blast off from here. Until that happens though, do expect that SPS will continue on this downward spiral right here. The other thing to note about SPS is over this recent history in 2022, what tends to happen for SPS is it will wick because of a major capitulation candle to the downside. So for example, this particular capitulation brought us all the way down to around 9 cents. You had a relief rally, but eventually we eventually close on this initial wick and that becomes the new floor. Just this happened when SPS was around 10 cents. Where did we eventually close? We eventually closed at around 10 cents two months after. And we actually saw that again. So if you notice right here, we wicked all the way down to around 8 cents. And roughly two months after, after a certain relief rally, but eventually we just slowly capitulated once again, look at where the established floors are now placed over the past three weeks. We eventually settled in to where the wick happened. And right now, what happened during this May capitulation right here, SPS fell all the way down to around six cents. So the next downside targets that we will actually aim for is this particular level right here. SPS settling in at around six cents. The hope that we have is this particular six cent range right here will coincide to Bitcoin's capitulation in this 200 MA right here or this 300 weekly MA right here. If that happens, then we know that the SPS downside from this particular level may be limited because Bitcoin and the rest of the crypto markets will face massive, massive capitulations. So if this is the final destination after that capitulation, then recovery is quite imminent from here. It doesn't mean that this is the absolute bottom. It just means we know roughly that it will range somewhere here before we eventually pick back up once the markets recover. However, if we get here before that major capitulation event happens, meaning we just slowly bleed like this and eventually meet this as our new floor, then expect that there will be new floors. And we can actually have a good gauge of how low we can potentially go on that particular wick. This candle right here, for example, was a 41% drop. This candle right here was also a 40% drop. So the scenario that we are facing is if we are here earlier than the Bitcoin capitulation, then if Bitcoin finally has a massive capitulation event, 40% from 5 cents would bring us to around the 3.5 cent range right here. So at this price level, where we are at is we are going to be 96.77% down from the all-time high. What do we know from altcoins during a bear market? They can go down to as much as 99%. So from a price target of around $1.08 as our all-time high, when we go to a 99 cent range, we are looking at a 1 cent SPS. So now that we know where could we potentially go, and now that we know that these are the downside targets, then it allows us to prepare accordingly. If you find yourself at a 1 cent SPS position where you actually catch SPS at this price level, then at this point, price level, if you are bullish on the project and if you believe in the project, this is the price where you are too stupid to not invest in this project. Because even a $1,000 investment in this particular price level would lead you to 100,000 SPS. However, if ever we actually go to the one cent range, this will most likely be a wick. So the potential targets would be, depending on your risk tolerance, once we reach a five cent level right here, then you know that this could be the start of the DCA range moving forward. 
if you're a bit more daring than most, then this is a potential DCA moment. But if you're slightly more conservative and really want to make sure that the price targets that you want would really bring in the bang for the buck, then this particular range from the 3 cent level to the 1 cent level could be the potential targets moving forward, where as long as the price is around the 3 cent level all the way to the 1 cent level, then this is pretty much your buy zone right here for the next stage of the bull market after major capitulation to the downside for SPS and the rest of the gaming crypto space. So these are my downside price targets. Let's see what happens in the next couple of months. Until then, once again, I am very, very bullish on Splinterlands. But being very bullish about the project and assessing risk rewards in relation to what's happening at the moment really has to be taken into consideration, especially during a bear market. You cannot just keep YOLOing in because price keeps going down and you are, quote, buying things at a discount. Always assume that floors will be broken. Always assume that we are nowhere near the bottom of the structure in a bear market. So I hope that helps and I'll see you in Discord. Yo, 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 before you go, like this video, subscribe, and share this video to your friends. Thank you very much and have a good day.